First Pres family. My name is Josh, and I'm excited to be able to share my testimony with you on this Tuesday. Uh, maybe you see me around church, but I am a member. I'm an intern slash resident at First Pres. My wife, Taylor, and I, we've been a part of the church for about three and a half years now. And it's just been an amazing place to develop us and to grow us into the people that we are today. Uh, but my childhood, um, I grew up in a Christian home. My dad's actually a pastor. He pastors a church in Palm City right now. Uh, but I grew up in the church. I was there all the time. I remember running around church offices, causing trouble, uh, but that was normal to me. And in 2005, my family and I moved down to South Florida, the church plant actually. And so that's how we got down here. I went through uh, middle school, high school at Jupiter Christian, and then I went to Palm Beach Atlantic University for my undergrad. And so really my whole life, uh, I've, I've been a Christian. My childhood has been a healthy one. Uh, when I think about it, I just have great memories. My parents are amazing. My older sister, Hannah, is awesome. And so when I think about uh, my upbringing and part of my story, I'm like, man, I really don't have that many complaints as far as um, just such a great atmosphere and family to be a part of. But uh, if you're anything like me, when, when someone asks you to share a testimony and that's kind of part of your story, I, for a while I was uh, you know, apprehensive to share because I was like, man, my story is kind of boring. Like I, I don't really have this kind of, you know, I was, I was addicted to drugs and Christ redeemed me and he pulled me out from that alley and restored me. Like my story was just kind of bland. And then I found myself starting to wish that I had a story. And maybe you've been in the same situation and, and then once God gives you a story, uh, you're like, you know, you can have it back now because I, really uh, I don't really want that story anymore. Well, uh, that was kind of what happened with me. Um, my uh, last year, my senior year of college, uh, Taylor and I were actually engaged. We were planning our wedding and everything was going great. And then in January of our senior year, um, my mom was suddenly diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. And she had never smoked before in her life, but it just came out of the blue and threw us all for a loop. But I remember the doctors telling my parents that they weren't sure if she was going to be able to see our wedding in that April. And that was just a really difficult season for us because uh, number one, it, it shocked us all, but then two, it was this tremendous fear um, that, that our time was limited now. And I'm a mama's boy, so that was, I'm really close to my mom. And so that whole season was really difficult for me. And especially for my wife and I and our whole family, trying to balance the, the immense joy of planning a wedding, but also the immense uh, disheartening fact of my mom having cancer. And, and how do you kind of navigate those two? And that's part of the reason why I love the book of the Psalms, because at one moment you have uh, great lament, and then the, moment, the next moment you have this... Um, great praise and how do you kind of navigate those two things i mean that's just life for us but that season was really difficult watching my mom go through that and really having a difficult time with the healing process and the cancer had spread and it really took a toll on her body she ended up in a wheelchair but at the end of the day she made it to our wedding she was there i got to dance with her even though she was in a wheelchair it was one of the most special moments of my life uh, she got to see our graduations. She was there. And so I look back and although there was a lot of fear and although there was a lot of um, heartache and sadness, at the same time, God has re blessed her. He has redeemed her. He's restored her um, and he has healed her to where she is officially now cancer free, which is just a complete miracle. And I think that when I look back and see how God has worked through that series of events, there was a lot of um, scary moments, but at the same time, we can see how God worked through even the small situations and how he carried her through and preserved her and really reassured us that, you know what, my hand is on her life and you got to trust me with this and, and I'm in control, not you. And for me, the way that that affected my faith was that I remember the weekend that she was diagnosed, we went up to the house to see them and, and she looked me in the eyes and said, this does not change your calling into ministry. She said, this does not change anything about what God has called you to do or what he has encouraged you to do or any of your dreams or passions or desires. 
And I always remember that moment in our relationship because no matter what has happened, God has reassured me of what he has brought us through and what he is bringing us to. And it's just been an incredible season to see my mom walk through the pain and the suffering of cancer and all that it takes from you, but how she's continued to stay the course, how she's kept her joy, how she's been positive throughout this whole thing. And it's taught me a principle about suffering in the light of faith and how suffering doesn't pull you away from the presence of God, but it pushes you closer to the presence of God. And she's she's shared so many stories about how that's been true for her. Uh, But I wanted to just share a quick passage from Hebrews chapter 4 because it's meant a lot to me and my story and and hopefully it'd be an encouragement to you. But Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been, tempted, has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. That verse uh, means a lot to me because it, it reminds me that we have a Savior that's not only compassionate enough to walk with us, but he is also powerful enough to heal us. And I think that when I think about the race of life, and this journey that we're on. When we go through difficult seasons and the dark seasons, uh, we don't just have this abstract savior that's kind of dictating and directing us from above and telling us to press on, but he's shoulder to shoulder with us, looking us in the eye as my mom did, saying, you can do this, press on, I'm here with you. And that's just meant so much to me and, and I've seen that so evidently in my life and our family's life and my wife as we've walked through this season of difficulty and the experience of knowing a savior that suffers with you and how that changes your perception of life and pain um, and how you can find joy and happiness in that because you have a savior that uh, that died for you redeemed you and restored you and he not only uh, knows how to fix your pain but he knows what your pain feels like and so hopefully that's an encouragement to you Um, I'm excited to just continue to hear all the stories and the testimonies out there in our church. But thanks so much for listening. God bless. Take care.